here at Mindy's Crab Shack. Today I'm going to be showing you how I do my Love Potion 3D Drip Cup. Um, right here I've got a prepared and spray painted red uh, 20 ounce hog tumbler. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the start to finish. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and add the glitter to it. Um, and um, just a couple things for review before we start. You will want your um, mask to protect you from the fumes of the epoxy. Gloves. Your glitter, of course and your medicine cup to uh, stir your epoxy in. I do have a piece of wax paper that will catch the glitter that falls. And um, before we go any further, um, if you like what you see, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and mark um, at 2.5 and 5. So I do this so I can see exactly where uh, the lines are when I start filling the medicine cup with epoxy. I do use um, the Illumilite casting for this. It is FDA compliant. So, and remember this is, uh, there are two parts, A and B, and they have to be equal parts. So I've got 2.5 of A. And I'm just filling it to that first line there. Making sure it's even. That way um, it does set up properly. And then we're going to add another 2.5 to equal 5 mils of epoxy. And I just take a stir stick and start stirring it, mixing it up. Now this, um, I do mix this part up really quick. Um, I'm not really worried at this point with bubbles or anything. And so because um, we're just going to put on a thin layer of epoxy to this tumbler. We won't even use the full five mils on this. Usually it takes uh, about three minutes to mix. Okay, so I've mixed it and as I mixed, I did scrape the sides and made sure, you know, there was no, uh, Nothing on the sides that didn't mix. All right. Just put, so what I do when I add this to the cup, and it just helps me ensure that I don't get too much on there. I put, oh, I would say probably a, about a quarter size and in my, the palm of my hand, and then I rub them together, and then I just take my hand and go around the cup and down the length of the cup, making sure I get full coverage on that cup. And you can tell if um, you miss any spots 
because where it is dry at will be kind of hard to, um, oh, if, anyways, if you feel any dry spots, you'll be able to tell the difference because your hands won't go down as smoothly. Now I am going to add a little bit more, not much. Remember you want a pretty thin layer on there. Now I want to make sure I get the bottom of this cup. and get down to the tip of it and just make sure all that is covered. Once I have it covered, I can go ahead, take off my gloves and set them aside. Now I probably used about, I would say just under a uh, 2.5. I still probably have a little over 2.5 mils left. So you can either just use that for, like if you have any molds that you have, um, you can add it to that or you can just let it uh, cure and throw it away. So next what we're going to do is go ahead and add the glitter. I've got my cherry red here and we're going to take this off the holder here and I'm just going to um, set this aside, my turner aside and then I'm just going to start sprinkling on the glitter making sure I get full coverage on that bottom. Now, uh, because I'm using red glitter, that is why I spray painted the cup red. This red is uh, my own glitter that I sell in my Etsy shop. It's Cherry Balm Red. And you can find my uh, Etsy shop for my glitter at MCS Glitter Company on Etsy and I'll have it posted in the comments below also. And there you go. It's beautiful red. And now we're going to let this set for about, I let it set for about six hours before I put the first coat of epoxy on. So we'll let it sit for six hours and then I'll be back and we'll put on the first coat of epoxy. Okay, so we're back and I have gone ahead and uh, put a clear coat on this cup after it dried for um, six hours. And then I went ahead and pre-stirred my epoxy. And we're going to go ahead and put a layer of epoxy on this cup. So we'll go ahead and start that now. Now you'll notice that um, for the new people that are just uh, watching this video, you'll notice that I do not uh, turn on my turner until I have coated the whole cup. I find it just easier for me to cover that way and making sure it's all even. Um, it's just easier for me to do it that way. 
and like I said, I did put a clear coat on here, and I've learned that by doing so, the glitter does not soak up as much epoxy, and I get a smoother uh, coat, um, first coat on it. So that's why I go ahead and um, just do a clear coat. And I use the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. It works really well. Hopefully I did enough for this cut. on pretty thick so yeah I'm just gonna start moving this around Just making sure it is all covered, even the bottom. If you get it on too thick, you can just keep on going. I'll go ahead and turn that on. This is a 20 ounce uh, hog, so um, I should only have to use 20 mils. You can see I have a lot. Now I'm just going from top to bottom, or I'm sorry, bottom to top, making sure all the glitter is covered. Making sure I get that bottom of the cup. And then I'm gonna go top to bottom, and then just kind of go over the edge there and bring it down. And that way I get a good uh, seal on the bottom. And I make sure that the bottom is not dripping with um, epoxy. And I make sure there's, uh, you know, it's pretty even at the curve there. Um, if you don't, you could get a big glob that just kind of turns and turns. And then when it's dry, you'll have this odd shaped glob at the bottom here. So I always just do a real thin coat on the bottom. And by the time you get your third coat on, that bottom is totally covered nice and even. Right, and so we're just going to let this turn for about six hours and then I'll hang it for a remainder of six, equaling 12 hours. And then um, I will check it and see how smooth it is. Um, if it's still really rough, I will go ahead and just put another coat on. If not, then I'll be back and we'll put on the decals and uh, get that part ready. And remember, um, this is a, uh, let me get my, 
Let me take off my gloves so I don't mess up the decals. So this is going to be a uh, uh, love potion cup. And so I am going to be using these decals, which I did show how to get them off the internet for free and um, put, put them in a uh, design space. Um, so if you want to see that video, go ahead and click on the link above. And I guess it's on this side, sorry. Go ahead and click the link above and you can see that video on how to get free PNGs. All right, so we'll be back and um, with the next step. All right, so we're back. Um, I've got my cup and uh, it's been dried for uh, 24 hours. Um, you usually don't have to wait that long. Um, I just didn't have time to get back to it. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and start putting on our half beads or half pearls to give it the 3D drip look. Um, I've got my E6000 and then I've got me a pick me up for your beads and then a small uh, paintbrush if we need it for the E6000. So what I'm going to do is just start by, let's clean this off. Now the E6000, it does tend to dry pretty quickly, so um, which is good. So this will set in. Um, I'm just going to put a bead wherever I feel one needs to go. And this bead set that I got, I got it off Amazon and it has like a whole bunch of different sizes. So you can start off, you know, with big ones and then just kind of go smaller. And I just kind of put them wherever I feel, um, the need to put it. And now this is just going to give it that 3D look, okay? Gives it that bubble look. I just put a dot there and then just put that bead on there. Whoops. Now I have tried different uh, jewel pickups and this, is, this one um, is actually through Silhouette and it's the one that's worked the best for me. Now remember, there is no rhyme or reason where you put the bead. Or what size you use. And I don't get it too far uh, or too close to the lip of the, the cup. I'm just like under that lip with some of them. And the reason for that, because I want the epoxy to kind of seal around there.
So I'm just gonna continue doing this and I'm just gonna fast forward this part as I go around the cup. And then um, when I get ready to mix the epoxy, I will be back. All right, so all the jewels are on that I'm gonna put on at this time. Um, our next step is going to be mixing the epoxy and getting that ready. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take our Alumalite uh, epoxy and I'm gonna go ahead, I've already marked my cup like I do, 10 mils of A and then 10 mils of B. And we're gonna go ahead and mix these. And I've got my mica powder here. It's from The Color Cottage, and you can find them online, um, thecolorcottage.com. I'll put the listing in the description below. Um, they have all sorts of mica powders, really pretty. And this one, um, is actually a, a pearl white shimmer really pretty and you'll be able to see that when I mix it and then I've got these little and now I found these at a secondhand store and they're just little measuring spoons um, there's three of them a smidge a pinch and a dash so we're going to use a smidge okay i don't see any streaks in there so we're gonna go ahead and add the smidge of mica powder. You really don't need a lot of mica powder. It um, contributes pretty good. Like I said, it's just a smidge. And we're just gonna mix that in there. And remember, this is the pearl white, uh, let's see, pearl white shimmer. So it's gonna have a shimmer to it. You want to make sure it is uh, totally mixed. It will get kind of clumpy, but if you keep on mixing it, that does smooth out. Like I said, see, you don't need a lot of it. And then, so our next step is, we're just gonna let this set. I'll be back in about 20 minutes to check it. We're getting, we're wanting to get a thick consistency. So when you put the drip on, it doesn't just drip all the way down the cup. So we wanna get it to where we can spread it and it drips, but not run. It's been about 20 minutes and I'm just here checking the epoxy and it's starting to get kind of uh, thicker as we let it set. Um, we're looking for a consistency to where it's not running like that. We want it almost drip, you know, like a drip and a little bit more elasticy. So we're gonna go ahead and let it set for another 10 minutes, and which will equal about 30 minutes. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes, 
and it is starting to thicken up a little bit more. I'm just going to scrape the sides here. And it's starting to get to a consistency that I'm happy with. You know, it's not just running, it's more of a good stream. It's starting to really thicken up nicely. So I'm thinking we're gonna let it set for another five minutes. Okay, so I decided to wait another 10 minutes after the 30. So it's, we've done a total of 40 minutes now, and it is about the right consistency. Very good. So one way for me to know exactly, um, okay, we're at the point where we want to start spreading this. As I stir it, you can see how thick it is. All right. So what I'm going to do is show you another way to figure out how I test it. And I just take my stick and scrape it off on the side there and see how slow it comes down. That's about the right consistency. I'm afraid if I was to leave it any longer um, that it would just, as I'm stirring it, I would just get this big ball on the end of my stick and there would be no way of saving that. So we're going to go ahead and start spreading it on our cup. And the way I do that is I go ahead, we're going to get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And I'm just going to take and start going along the edge of the top there. And kind of have your cup at an angle to where it starts going over those beads there. And I'm just going over the, to where it's pretty even with the edge there. And don't forget, as you're going along, it is going to continue to thicken. So this part you want to work kind of fast. So you don't get that big ball of epoxy and can't work with it. Like I said, I'm just taking and um, going around the cup. Now it's doubtful that I will use all of this. Yeah, so you are going to waste some. But on this side size of cup, I'm going to use pretty much most of it. And just see how it's starting to go over those uh, beads there. That's what you want it to do. And I just keep on adding around the top there and just let it start dripping down. Hopefully I've got that in camera range where you can see. And be careful because it will start to, if you have it like this, it's gonna drip off the cup. So you want it kind of angled at a good angle. And just keep on turning it so you can see where you need to put more epoxy. You want to make sure that all the beads are covered. 
and kind of guide where you want that epoxy to go. Okay. You're gonna see it start dripping off. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna let that kind of start dripping. And we're gonna bring over, and I should have had this down already. Um, so my silicone mat could catch it. If you need to, to make it stop dripping down, just bring it up. Get that back in and I see some holes here so I kind of want to just put some epoxy there And I try not to uh, take your my epoxy and bring it up over the this portion of the cup because you don't want it to drip down on you know this part. So um, I just kind of let it uh, take and have my cup and my epoxy in line with each other so that it um, goes exactly where I want it to. Sorry if I'm like breaking up in my speech because I'm really concentrating on what I'm doing and sometimes I can't Think about what I want to say and uh, do what I'm doing at the same time because I'm so into what I'm doing. If you get some drips where you do not want them, have your wipes on hand and just take and wipe it away like so. Okay, I'm just gonna lift it up here. You see the epoxy starting to get thicker and thicker. I'm making sure those beads are covered. And then the next step, now what I'm gonna do, it's, the drip is pretty much the way I want it. Um, I'm happy with that. It's, uh, you know, any that, any parts that I don't like, I'm just kind of wiping away with my wet wipe. Kind of, you know, so it's gone exactly where I want it to. Now I'm just going to put it on my turner and just start letting it turn. And I'm not worried about it going one way or another. Um, it will, it's thick enough, it's not going to move much now. Um, we've got it to where it's hardly moving at all even when I put it up on its end like this, upside down. 
so it's moved as much as pretty well as much as it's going to so once this has dried i'm gonna say you're gonna need to let it dry for at least 12 hours and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint that um and I'm thinking about painting it a pink. And so we will be back in about 12 hours and we'll go ahead and paint the uh, bubbles there. So we've got our cup here and it's all dry. And um, I've noticed that I do have a lot of uh, epoxy inside the cup and around the rim. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cleaned up before we paint it. So I've got my 100% acetone and I just got this at Walmart. It's their um, professional remover acetone. You can find it by the nail polish stuff. And I'm just taking a cotton wipe and going around the rim taking off any paint that might be inside from when we first spray painted it and then I've got a hot knife and that's gonna allow me to get the inside and it just get under that um, the epoxy and you can cut it away. If you don't have a hot knife, it's okay. You can just use like your, uh, the knife that you get like through Cricut. So I'm just going around the rim, getting the epoxy that got up on the rim. I'm just, and the hot knife, it's really nice to have because it just cuts right through it. Hopefully I got that in the screen so you can see. And then I take my, uh, another cotton swab and just go around that rim again to get off any leftover paint that might be there or um, see if I can feel any more epoxy. Sometimes after taking acetone to it, you can just take your fingernail and kind of scrape it off too. You know, the little, little pieces. And it comes right off. So that acetone starts eating it away. So you wanna make sure you don't get it on the outside of this because it will kind of eat it away. I only use acetone on the inside and on my rim. See how easy that comes off just with my fingernail after I've taken the acetone to it. But for the big hard chunks, I like to use that knife to get right under it. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint it and then before um, or after I epoxy again, I will make sure because I have used acetone inside, I will make sure that I go ahead and wash it in hot soapy water. All right, so let's go ahead and start painting this. Now what I'm gonna use is this uh, alcohol ink, it's a pink. And I just have my dish here. And I just put some of this in my dish. Make sure you shake it up a little. You don't need a lot 
And then I add a little bit of 90% alcohol. Not a lot, just like a smidge. And I kind of mix it up there. And then I can just start painting it. I don't want it real dark. I just want a light painting. And I just make sure that I stay on that white. If you feel like you've added too much alcohol, go ahead and add some more alcohol ink. Remember, this does dry fast. And if you get, sometimes you'll get lines like you see right here. Just go over it and even them out. And you know, it blends real well. That's why I like putting the alcohol in there because it just, I don't know, I found that it's easier to blend. And I don't have as many of the lines that show up, like with your um, wood grains. So I'm just going to keep on painting this and probably fast forward through here. And there you go. You've got your color on your uh, drip there. And so the next step is, is that you want to go ahead and enclose all of that in. And so you're going to put on your last coat of epoxy. And I know that I went up on the ridge again. So what I'm going to do is while this is turning, I'm going to take a wipe. And just on the inside of it, I'm just going to clean that edge off. Just like so. making sure that none of that is on the rim there. Okay, and then we're just gonna do the same thing and let it dry for 12 hours and then it'll be done. So I will show you the finished product when it's all done. And here it is, the final look at the 3D Bubble Drip Tumbler. Now, if you like what you see, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. You can also join my private Facebook group at Mindy's Craft Shack on Facebook. Now, a list of the supplies and websites is listed in the description below. You all have a wonderful day. Love ya. Bye.